Good afternoon and good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Joy of SharePoint. In today's webinar, we are going to talk about private channels inside of Microsoft Teams. Those are definitely a hot topic and they have been even before they were a thing. They were something that I'd be lying if I said we all wanted them, but they were something that a lot of us people in the community, not me, wanted. They're here now. So let's talk about governance because I'll confess, even though I'm not super excited about how they can be a little prolific in teams, they can fill a very niche need inside of our teams. So we're going to dig into it. We're going to have some fun. And I brought my workplace twin Richard along with me today because I, I just can't do a webinar without him anymore. It feels <laughs> like I just need Richard. Richard, how are you today? I am doing really well. Thanks so much. Uh, <laughs> good afternoon, everybody. And so thanks for joining us today. Yeah, I'm just, you know, riding shotgun today here, um, helping out talk with this particular topic. I'm excited to, uh, to, you know, help discuss and ensure that everybody has at least kind of a good idea as to, you know, hey, what is this thing about private channels and when would I use them and so on and so forth. Um, you know, it's it's certainly, I think, and Joy kind of mentioned that this is one of the top requested features that uh, had come about for Microsoft Teams since it came out, since Teams came out and launched a couple of years back. So, you know, it's been available for a little while now. Um, hopefully some of you have had a chance to start using it. And uh, yeah, we're going to dig into that today. We're going to dig in a little bit of background. If you have never joined either a Joy of SharePoint or a Pate Group webinar, I am Joy Apple. I work at Pate Group as a modern workplace strategist. I also do a lot of training and do service adoption stuff. Been in the space for about 12 years. Can't imagine being anywhere else. There's always something new and exciting going on in Microsoft 365, so it's a great place to be. And uh, you may know Richard and I are actually twins at Pate Group. We're both <laughs> modern workplace strategists. Now, right. so I think you're the older twin, though. You got you got some more years under your belt. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe, just a little, a few more years, you know. But uh, yes, we definitely uh, we share similar responsibilities here at Pate. And uh, as strategists for the modern workplace, it basically means that we do all things Microsoft 365, really focused in on Microsoft's collaboration and communication tools like SharePoint, like Teams, and uh, you know, really you could argue that everything in Microsoft 365 in some way, shape, or form is for communicating, collaborating, being more productive, et cetera. Um, but yeah, I've been doing this for quite some time, going on about 20 years or so in consulting and also worked at Microsoft uh, for a while as a modern workplace specialist. So, you know, we're going to start off today's webinar uh, just with something we typically do. We're going to switch it up just a tiny bit this time, actually. Normally, we do just a bit of a poll, and we just want to kind of gather some input from folks uh, that are joining us today uh, based on some questions. But, you know, we thought we might do something kind of fun for us, maybe more fun for us than it would be for you. Uh, is we're just going to do a quick pop quiz <laughs> related to the topic at hand here today. And uh, the way that you can get to this quiz, by the way, is there's a link to this Microsoft form. This is uh, actually based off a quiz, not just a survey that you can create from Microsoft Forms. You can get to that in the link in the, Q, uh, in the QA panel. If you really cared to, you could also point your uh, mobile device to this nifty QR code here, which when you do so, it'll prompt you in your mobile device to open up a browser to this form. But, uh, you know, we thought to ourselves, okay, Everybody asks these questions all the time, and Joy's going to go into this in depth here during this webinar. But, you know, okay, so we have teams and it's great. And, you know, I can create new teams. And, okay, now I need to be able to do this. And so, should I create new teams? Should I create a new channel in a team? Now we have these things called private channels. Should I create a new private channel? So, we thought we might just quiz you a little bit. And uh, we came up with a few different scenarios here. So if you would, please just go ahead and take a stab at some of these. We're just trying to get an, an idea here as to um, what you think would be the responses to any of these given questions. So number one, uh, just kind of reading it through a little bit. If you wanted to be able to include people from outside your team, but you don't want to add them to one of your existing teams, what might you do? Um, mm -hmm. For situation number two, if you want to be able to, within your existing team, just isolate a set of discussions and maybe documents into a different area. How might you separate those out? 
And then in scenario three, maybe being a little bit more specific, what if you wanted to be able to share information with some of your team members on your team, but you know, it would be in fact a security problem if you were to actually let them see that content or conversation, what might you do? And we're getting a number of good responses here at this point now. Um, by the way, just letting you all know, there's not really a hard set rule, right or wrong answer to any of these. So don't feel bad necessarily if you didn't choose one of the ones that we thought would be the right answer here. Um, but you know, probably giving it away because when you use the quiz format in forms, it gives you an opportunity to, as the instructor or a teacher, be able to indicate which of these is considered the correct answer in this case. So we marked what we thought would be the correct answer for these different scenarios. So for number one, as you can see here, we thought that in this case, you'd go ahead and just create a new team. You certainly can create private channels. So again, like we were saying, there isn't a right or wrong answer to this one. So we got a few people that said, let's do a new team and a few that said a new private channel. I think the answer is you're both probably right. Um, on this one here, if you wanted to be able to separate your conversations and docs into a, another area in your team, you could certainly just create a new channel, and we thought that that would probably be the correct answer on that too. Again, not a wrong answer to say a private channel, because you could certainly do that as well, just to isolate those discussions and the content. And then for scenario number three, you know, I think you probably all kind of get where we're leading you at this point here. Private channels is definitely an opportunity when you have an existing team and you just want to carve off a piece of it to ensure that it is private and secure to a few of those team members before private channels. The only way we could do that was to create a new private team. So again, Joy's going to go into this in depth, but thank you so much for answering and uh, participating in our pop quiz. Feel free for any of you that haven't answered this just now to uh, just join in. We'd love to gather all your responses along the way. Okay, so going back to the webinar, actually I'll go ahead and have you take over there, Joy, if you'd like. Absolutely. And I'm going to I'm going to admit to you all a couple of different things real quick while I am sharing my screen. Yes, really, I want to share teams. Thank you for asking that first question is almost a little bit of a trick question because it does mention adding new users that are not already part of an existing team. So we're going to talk about some of the little nuances that are involved here with our private channels. Um, something else I'll confess. Um, you know, it's kind of my webinar, so I get to pick the right answers, right? Isn't that the rule? <laughs> I made the slide deck. No, nah, I'm kidding. Um, one of the great things with Teams, uh, the modern infrastructure for SharePoint in general is you have to try really hard to back yourself into a corner. You truly can't Oh, I feel like I shouldn't say that because as soon as I say that you can't back yourself into a corner, I'm going to have a client call and tell me they did. But um, you got to work hard to not be able to come back from going, oops, I should have done X instead of Y. OK, so don't panic. Uh, would it be frustrating if you already had put a bunch of stuff in there and you need to remove it? Sure, but there's tools that make that easy, even built into that platform. So don't stress. And as far as the pop quiz itself goes, uh, anyone remember whose line is it anyway? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Everything's made up and the points don't matter. <laughs> That's right. right. <laughs> We're just here for the fun and to learn a little bit. So let's recap. I'm going to kind of start at the beginning of thinking of teams, not all the way the beginning, but just the anatomy of what our team inside of teams consists of. Channels. That's about it. So in your team, you have channels and then in channels you have tabs. The tabs give us functionality in the channel. It's like your SharePoint site. If you didn't have lists and libraries, you couldn't really do much. You could put a web part on a page, but what are you going to display if you don't have content? So our default tabs inside of our team's channels, posts, that's our team's chat, files, the wiki tab, and then we can add other tabs. If you would put a link on a SharePoint page to something, you can put a tab in your channel to something, right? So it's kind of the team's version of web parts and links. Tabs bring functionality. But we're talking about channels today. Channels allow us to organize both our communication and our content inside of the team. 
right? So my example that I have here on the left, Project Excelsior, Stan the Man Lee, rest in peace. Mm -hmm. Everything we do at Pate Group, mostly, is project based, right? And I honestly feel that's an unfair advantage for us because projects are really easy to build a team around. Where it can get complicated is where you start thinking about how are we going to divide up a department and the various work streams and the functional business areas inside of a department. That can get a little bit tricky, especially if there's certain things that some functional areas do that others shouldn't have access to. OK, but we're not going to get too bogged down in the nitty gritty of that. We're going to talk about basic organization and security. So for my project Excelsior, I have channels created here for my client called Excelsior. We all know if we're in teams, we've been in teams long. As soon as you create a team, you get a general channel. Well, what do we put in the general channel? Yeah, stuff, general stuff. Uh, generic, things that apply to every aspect of our team can go in general. That way I don't have to dig through things that sound very specific to find that non-specific information. But typically at Pate Group, anytime we bring on a new customer, one of the first things we want to do is something called deployment planning because people are typically coming to us because they want to get into Microsoft 365, maybe from old SharePoint or file shares or Google Drive or, you know, insert platform here. One thing we do is we come in, we assess where they are, talk with their user base and develop a roadmap to get them where they want to be. So if I'm coming into my team and I want to talk about something specifically related to deployment planning, then I need a deployment planning channel to talk in. If we've gone on and the client has decided, yes, we want to do it and we want you to come build it for us, Joy, thank you so much. OK, I need a place to talk about implementation and migration. I wouldn't do that in general because it's too specific. I wouldn't do that in deployment planning. I've already done that. I need to jump in and build stuff. Oh, they need a, uh, what have I got there? An, a um, onboarding flow. Why would I talk about that in implementation and migration? It's very specific development work. So by defining the channels around what we do in our team, we're defining where to go to talk about it and the content that should go there. So if I need to go look at a migration spreadsheet, I'm probably not going to the onboarding flow channel to do that. I know it's going to be in my implementation and migration channel. OK, I feel like I've been preaching about that for a hot minute. If you find yourself wanting to add folders into those files, tabs that already live, you know, in our team, in the channels, I'm going to challenge you to create a channel first because our channels are just folders that live in that connected documents library in SharePoint. We're going to look at some of this a bit as we go. If you've not been in the nitty gritty of Teams for very long, and I said that and you went, holy crap, there's a SharePoint site out there, it's going to be OK. <laughs> it's there. You don't have to do a lot with it if you don't want to. Um, we can point you to some resources that can help you out, or you can connect with us on social media. We can help you with that. Paint Group can help you with that too. Shameless plug. So by default, when I'm in my team, if I have access to Project Excelsior, I have access to every standard channel, every one of them. That's going to be this general guy, deployment planning. I'm intentionally skipping the padlock. We're coming to that in a minute. Any of these. If I need a private channel, I'm saying I need a place for content and conversation that has to do with the whole team, but it's got a certain level of security around it. Not everyone on the team should see it. It's still about Project Excelsior, but not everyone on this team has a need to have access to it. And I said need, not want, and that's a very important thing. We have a question. Yes. Do you typically hide a team such as Project Excelsior when the project is completed? And you, the sound blipped out for just a minute. So do I typically, was that archive? Hive. 
hide. Yep. At, hide. at paint group, we do tend to hide them. Um, OK, I'm going to I'm going to you know how the cobbler's children don't always have shoes and the mechanics car isn't always the one that gets you know tended to first. So we tend to do be a little bit busy at paint group. And when we first set up teams, only a few people were owners. So typically I would probably be the one that would go through and archive our older teams, but I'm not an owner of them yet because it just takes time and maintenance. I would recommend archiving it because you can always then go and unarchive it very easily. And that can even be done in such a way that the SharePoint site remains active if it needs to be. You just want that collaborative side of Teams closed down, or you can make the SharePoint site read only when you archive. There are definitely options there. I'll be real with you. I hide almost every team that I'm a member of, active or not active, because Ooh, we have I, a lot. Do I know you? why. I know why. <laughs> We've because talked about I'm this uptight. in previous webinars. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm so uptight. Alphabetizing, uptight. alphabetizing. It's magic, people, when you hide. <laughs> oh, Richard telling on me. Um, We'll do. I'll show you this in a minute. It's it's magic when I discovered it. When you hide your team, it auto alphabetizes everything under hidden teams. So now I can just go click the drop down, open up my hidden teams, and scroll directly to the one I want. So I'm not sure that that's the proper use case for hiding a team, but it is proper if it's cleaning out the clutter and getting the noise away from you. I don't know if it's noise, if it's visual clutter, but you know, just get it out of the way and organize. Yeah, I'll I'll chime in with one comment just because the question from Jeff was specifically around hiding a team. So yeah, absolutely agree with Joy that when you're when you're wrapped up a project based team, you could certainly benefit from using the archive team capability because it basically kind of sets it all to an inactive state allows you to set the docs to read only and things like that, the SharePoint site if you want that to be done. Um, that said, when you hide teams and if you hide channels for that matter, even in teams that you are not hiding, just a quick tip that that hiding does impact notifications that you set in teams. So if you are like me and you go into teams into channels really specifically wanting to kind of dial in your notifications because you want to make sure you're staying on top of the important messages and and then like joy said kind of reduce some of the noise that happens a lot from all the notifications that tend to pop up just know that hiding channels and then by extension hiding teams which in fact hides mm -hmm. all the channels in the teams does impact your notification settings in that it basically turns them off it mutes notifications when you hide them so just something to to toss out since the question was relating was specific to hiding a team. Yeah, absolutely. It will bold them. So like when you do yes. go unhide and you're looking through your list, you'll see bold headings and titles for missed yep. activity. Um, that's where we do want to make sure people understand if you need me specifically, you need to at mention me so I get the notification regardless of if that team or channel is hidden or not. Like, hey, you're being talked to go go see what's happening. Yeah. Yep. Yep. All right. Are we considering public or private channels? Right. Which one? Which one do I want? And I really started thinking about these series of questions that we're about to go through because I had a client reach out. I was like, hey, Joy, we're setting up teams where they had one department that was going to be the proof of concept for this, and it was going to be one big department team with a private channel per area of department. And I don't know, some people call it a business unit, some people call it a sub department, however you classify it, those smaller breakouts of the department, they were doing a private channel per. And then we're being hit with the challenge of, well, where's the planner plan? Where's this, where's that? What's going on? This isn't functioning the way we thought. So let's jump in and look at it. Two questions, just two, will get you started on the right foot. The people you're thinking about, OK, if I create a private channel, these people that are going to be in it, are they, are they already part of this same team, this existing team that, that we're thinking about? And is it a breach of security if everyone that's already in the team 
sees this content and conversation for this new space we're thinking about creating, whether it's standard or a private channel? Are we all part of the same team? And is it a breach of security? And you all that have, have known me for a little while know I came out of the government side of the world. I approach almost everything from a security perspective first because, you know, just because you're paranoid doesn't mean they're not out to get you. So you gotta think about it. Okay, are these people that we're thinking about already part of this existing team? Yes, okay. Is it a breach of security if everyone on the team sees this content or this conversation? No, you just need a standard channel. And typically when we're really in the weeds talking about it, someone will say, but not everyone on the team cares about it. That's okay. Because Jeff, thank you for asking earlier, they can hide it, right? Not caring or it's just not important for everyone. Maybe we care, but it's just not something I need to be actively involved in every minute of every day. It's fine, that's not a security justification. Make it a standard channel and make sure people understand that if you have a team that's gonna have 20 channels, that's okay, that's not wrong at all. Hide the ones that are clutter to you and make sure people understand if you need to reach someone, at mention them. Boom, win, win for everyone. Okay. Are these people all part of the existing, the same team? No. Okay, so we got new people we're thinking about. Is it a breach of security if everyone in that existing team sees that content or conversation? Yes, we need a new team. And this was actually, I think, the first question on the pop quiz. And this is where it's tricky. This is where it's tricky. Or there's a song about that, isn't it? Uh, you cannot bring in new people that aren't part of your existing team and add them to a private channel because that cha that private channel is still looking at the Office 365 group or the Microsoft 365 group that defines its membership. I can't bring people outside of that membership group and put them in a private channel. Will that ever change? I can't answer that question, but a private channel has to still be people that are in the team already. So really, you don't have to answer the breach of security question. If we're talking about a new subset of people or are just new people in general, we need a new team. Don't despair if you're thinking in your head, oh my gosh, this might be a lot of teams. I think you get like 500,000. We're going to be OK. We're going to be fine. Just make friends with your teams and your SharePoint admins, you know, give them gifts occasionally maybe their thing is chocolate or pretzels or vodka because you know it can be lonely being an admin all right this is the sweet spot in my mind this is absolutely a joy of sharepoint opinion based on seeing people suffer from not doing it this way are all of these people part of the existing team yes cool is it a breach of security if everyone else on the team sees this content? Yes. That, my friends, is the crossroads that defines a private channel. 100%. Because it's about the team and it's membership of the team, but there's a security need to protect it. It's a cubby hole. That's my favorite word for it. It's a cubby hole inside of our team where only the appropriate people are there. So, dun, 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 let's jump in and see what we're talking about. Willis, okay. So, of course, I am relying on my handy dandy Contoso environment for the demo. Here I am, Megan. So she's one of my alter egos. And we're going to take a look at the Mark 8 project team. It's not going to be super complicated, but we'll look at some of the hiding stuff and talking about how to make sense of all the channels. But here we have general. Again, that's the channel we get when we first create our team. I've met with and I've worked with people that really don't know what other channels they need to create. They have a new team. 
They're like, well, we, we don't, we don't, I don't really know what makes sense. What are we going to do? What should we put there? If you're new and you're trying to figure that exact thing out, what channels do I need? Cool. Don't feel you have to rush it, but I'll, I don't know. I don't want to say warn. That sounds ominous. But the general channel, if that's all you use inside of your team, can start to feel like that group chat or group text you've got going on with your friends and family. Things can be very random, very confusing, and people are responding today to things that happened three weeks ago, right? It can be a little chaotic. If you already know for a fact that, well, we have a lot of meetings and we have agendas for those meetings and we track the rosters, okay, get started with a meeting channel and hold your team meetings in the channel in Teams, right? It's an easy place to get started. For this project team here inside of my Contoso environment, we've got that general. Then there's a place for the digital web assets to be, a place for the go-to-market plan, in the news, right? Links and information about where this project is gonna be highlighted in the news, research and development, oh look, one hidden channel, design. Because Megan is not really involved in the design process. So design for her is just kind of noise and clutter. If they want her opinion, they can at mention. Megan can jump in, give her two cents worth. But let's say that our project manager needs a place for the financials of the project to be discussed, to be shared, to be worked on but the whole project team doesn't really need to be part of that. In fact, it's probably inappropriate. I'm gonna create a private channel by clicking on the ellipsis. Um, I will say, if, if you've been around me very long, you've heard me say this, anytime you see three dots in a Microsoft tool, click it, because it's a menu for other things you can do. And if we just cast our eyes around the screen, there's three dots. Oh, look, up in my browser, there's three dots. Here's more. Everywhere you look, it's more options. It's just a way to condense space on the screen. And if you're a compulsive clicker like me, just go click it. All right, so I'm going to add a channel. Channel name. Um, it does not have to be fancy. Call it what it is. One of the hardest things to do in SharePoint, in Teams, and work stuff is to name things. I found that we can trip on that and it can keep us from moving forward. Just call it what it is, it's fine. Privacy, standard or private, accessible only to a specific group of people within the team. So we're still in the team, which means we're in that Microsoft 365 group. All right, and then I'm gonna say next. It's gonna add that channel. Now it says, okay, here's your private channel. Only the people you add here will see it. So it looks like I can add Nestor. Um, and Lynn. And the people that it's recommending See, I'm typing a T. Let's say there's a Timothy somewhere in my organization, but that Timothy is not showing up here because he's not part of this Office 365 group, All right? See, so it's going to scope what old Joy of SharePoint would call the people picker would find. We'll throw Isaiah in here too and add. Okay, I can promote one or more of these folks to be an owner. You don't want to be the army of one. Heaven forbid you go on vacation and someone needs to do owner stuff, right? We wanna share that responsibility. So here is the private channel. It will not show up for the people that are not a member of it. So it does security trim. And if this is super important, right, I can come in I can customize my channel notifications. I'm gonna say all activity. No matter what goes on here, I wanna know about it. When I'm here, notice I don't have a wiki. I do have files. Any content that I drag and drop into files or that I drop into a conversation in posts, right, will get uploaded here. 
Let's get that. Must have closed that in an effort to get things condensed right before the webinar, but I'm going to grab some fake stuff. Drop it in. Get a few things here. All right, so I'll upload some stuff to my private channel. And again, this channel is organizing the content, so the other members on my team that are not here don't have access to it. In fact, let's show you how serious the phrase don't have access to it really is. I'm going to open in SharePoint. Okay, so far so good. Uh, anyone, if you're new to Teams, I'll remind you that every time we create a channel in our team, a folder with that name is created inside of the documents library for the connected SharePoint team site. Okay, Teams is not in the business of managing files, holding files, doing anything with content, but it is in the business of making it easy for you to get to that content and to collaborate. So it works with SharePoint for document management. I'm going to click on this breadcrumb. All right, and there is my folder that's representing my project management channel. OK, lady, pretty sure I remember you're thinking that there were more channels than this inside of the team. Yes, sure are. So I'm going to click over here on general. And you don't have to actually go into files and open in SharePoint to open in SharePoint. One of the handy dandy things this ellipsis does is give you an open in SharePoint link here. OK, general. Documents. It'd be great if that would actually click. A refresh always helps. Design, digital assets web, general, go to market in the news. These are my standard channels. This is my private channel. So when I create a private channel, Teams is going, OK, you want security? I'm going to give you security. And it goes and creates a brand new, completely separate SharePoint site, aka site collection. If you notice in the URL, it's named after the team and the channel. Why would it do that? Well, because in SharePoint architecture, yes, we're going there. Every time you see slash sites slash and you have a site name, that is a hard and fast security boundary. And Teams and SharePoint are working together and we say this channel is private and it needs to have a security boundary. OK, we're going to put a security boundary up. Uh, best practice has always been to secure the largest object possible. And we could argue and I could sit on either side of this fence that it would be cleaner from a management perspective just for getting to stuff. Couldn't it have just created a uniquely secured document library? Absolutely. I have no doubt that that could have actually been a little bit easier inside of the interface for teams to do, but you're at risk of exposing that to the wrong people inside of the site. By doing a site collection, you have very clean permissions. It can't accidentally be inherited. You couldn't accidentally put members of that Office 365 group in a place where they can see the content. Is it something else to manage from the SharePoint side of the world? Uh huh. Is that a bad thing? Not really. Where it's a bad thing is when it's not a breach of security. It's perfectly fine for us all to see all these things, but we intentionally make it hard. Intentionally is probably a wrong word, but we make it hard by making everything private and now I have to go from site to site to site to site to site just to get to all the stuff I should have access to anyway. How are we doing? Does anybody have any questions or feedback before we talk a little bit more about the hiding and, and cleaning up the clutter? Can you say you see the 
private channel, private channel in the SharePoint app. Can you see the private channel in the SharePoint admin portal? Yeah. I think you can now. A few months back, you could not, but let's make sure. That was a pretty recent change. That separate SharePoint site didn't even use to have a home page. It was just a very odd duck. Let's see. What was it? Oh, Mark 8. How soon we forget. Well, at the moment, I'm just seeing this one. So I'm going to say we're going to need PowerShell for this. Richard, have you heard anything to the contrary of PowerShell? I was also also I was also just checking that myself and I didn't see it. So I'm going to look it up here yep. so we can get a response before the end of the webinar. Yeah, perfect. Uh, and we'll grab that PowerShell script uh, or a link to it and we'll make that available. If we can't get it by the wrap of the webinar, we will definitely tweet that out here once we wrap. Um, Friend and colleague Ashley Rogers and I kind of were digging into this a few months back and she was like, well, because she is a PowerShell queen. She's like, I know I got my PowerShell. <laughs> I'm hoping that's going to come soon. Um, Microsoft definitely has more of the, let's put it out there, see how it's adopted, how it's utilized, and then create the user interface to manage it after that. But they don't leave us high and dry. They definitely give us the PowerShell to do it before it's adopted into the user interface. There's, we'll say that. Okay. Again, though, it's a site. So if project management, and let's be real, there's probably more than just a handful of documents that project management's going to end up needing to work on for a project. There's probably going to be timelines. Uh, there's going to be other things that come into play. So having a whole site at their disposal if they choose to utilize an intranet site for that, you really can't go wrong. It gives you a place to come together and to work on things. If just having the, the team and the channel to have the conversations and to talk back and forth works well, go for it. Show you one other thing here real quick. When I add a tab inside of that private channel, it's a little scaled down because it's disconnected from that Office 365 group. So it's going to be disconnected from that default planner plan. Could I go create a planner plan and link to it with the website tab? Yep, absolutely. Or put it on the SharePoint homepage. Whatever makes sense, whatever works well for the team. You, know, you can still use OneNote. We've still got all of our good stuff here. So in terms of our channels and our organization, again, oh geez, if I start creating a channel for every area here, it's not a breach of security if everyone sees it, but goodness, it's gonna be, it's so cluttered because you can have up to 200 channels inside of a team. I haven't seen that yet. I'm not saying it's not out there. I just haven't interacted with it. It's okay because I can absolutely come to any of those channels that are in my way. Let me actually try clicking that. Oh, I've pinned it. I can unpin it. See how it's pinned up here? At first, I thought I was losing my mind because I couldn't hide it. I've actually told SharePoint, um, oh, Teams, that this is a very important channel and I want it pinned at the top for easy access, but it's not set in stone. And now I can hide it. I can hide all these guys. And it just collapses them right here for me. And this is showing, these are bold. Design and go to market are bold. There are messages in there I haven't read. Research and development, I'm up to date. So it's a little visual clue there that there's some unread content I might want to hop in here and take a look at. As far as the teams themselves, Jeff, I'll address this real quick. Yeah, we can hide these guys. And it could be, we don't really want to go through an archive process, but gosh, we've got so many teams, I'm tired of seeing them all. Huge fan of hiding teams. 
and then notice alphabetical order. Every once in a while, I'll pop, pop open my hidden teams inside of my paid group teams. There's probably about 50 of them in there and just scroll to see if there's any notifications that I need to go pay attention to that maybe no one at mentioned me that mentioned the team. Go take a look. Yeah, once or twice a week, but we have that understanding. If you need me, you say my name and I will be there and I will respond as soon as I possibly can. In fact, and you click on your face or your initials, whatever may be there, and go to settings. Notifications, it's a big deal. Personal mentions, channel mentions, team mentions. Personal mentions is the only one of these you cannot turn off. Maybe I don't want ban uh, banners, I don't want emails, I don't want to even see anything in my feed. I don't care about channel mentions. I just turn it off. Same for Teams. I cannot turn off personal mentions because someone may need you. This is the surefire way, to use a Southern expression, to make sure that gets seen. Personally, I do have my missed activity to hit me up once every hour. So if someone has mentioned me, uh, or I have this for my team and channel mentions too, I'll get an email about once an hour if I haven't addressed something. So maybe I'm focusing on client correspondence and I'm in Outlook, I'll see those emails come in if I've missed it after an hour. If an hour doesn't seem like long enough, you could bump it up to eight or you could reduce it down to 10 or as soon as possible. Hear me, people that feel you need to know as soon as possible, be willing to be flexible in this because this could mean every 30 seconds, every 90 seconds, you could be getting an email from Teams. Just depends on how busy and how active your teams are that you're a member of. Don't drive yourself crazy. Maybe try 10 minutes, maybe try once an hour. Daily, that just seems like insanity to me. And you can absolutely set up your mobile notifications to also ping you, even if you're active on your desktop or the web application. By default, if you're active in these locations, your phone won't ping you, but you can go change it. So even if you are, it's me, I dual wield. So even if I'm talking to Richard in Teams here, it will still buzz at me if Stacy or Stephanie hit me up. I'll get that notification on my phone too. I like that. Any questions about all this fun stuff? Any relationship, Any relationship between public, private teams and standard private channels? Okay, read that one more time for me. Sure. Any relationship between public, private teams and standard private channels? Public and private teams, standard. Are we thinking something like, well, come on. So this is an org wide team and I can add a channel and make a private channel in an organizational wide team. Um, so I'm not really sure what direction that question is wanting to go. If you want to like uh, fill in like a little for example, I want to, that would be great um, just to make sure I'm tracking with where you're wanting to go with that. But as far as a relationship, you can build either type of channel in an org wide team or even a public team inside of teams. Let's see if this one is. Oh, this one is private. Let's create one. Let's create a team from scratch. I'll make it public. Notice, let me hit back. So private means you either have to add people or you can give them the code for them to come join. Public means people can search on the team page, find it and come on in. 
Org wide means everyone in the organization is automatically put in, uh, but there is some control for you can add moderators and you can make posts in there that not everyone can uh, reply to, so you can have some control there. But I'm going to go public. I'll call it what it is, right? You wouldn't want to do that in the real world. Someone would see public and would have a heart attack thinking that that meant that everybody in the world could see it. <laughs> Let Mister just so there's someone in there. Close. And then here's where I can absolutely come in and add either a standard or a private channel. We have a couple more questions. Are you ready? Absolutely. OK, can you add visitor read only members to a private channel? If they're in the team, then yes, they can be in the private channel. As far as making them read only, that gets a little tricky because that means they can't contribute to the chat. They can only see the documents. It can be done, but it's not ideal. If you just want them to see documents and to be able to read documents, not modify them in any way, then it's going to make more sense to approach that from the SharePoint side of the world. Add them as a visitor to an externally shared site where there is no internal information present. It's always a best practice to create a separate site if you're going to bring in external people. Um, and I'll show you. Doo -doo. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to manage team. And this is actually a bit of a pop quiz for myself. I'm just going to take a peek at guest permissions. Yeah. So by default, inside of a team, you can't say that guests can't chat. That would have to be at the tenant level. And that means it's going to apply to everybody. And I'll tell you, I've heard, was it Andrew Connell? I heard say that uh, if there were a truly read only level for people in Teams, it would be called Lurker. Because, you know, in the chat rooms, when people are just there watching other people talk, they never contribute. We always call them that they're just lurking. So <laughs> we don't want to create lurkers. Any other questions, Stacy? Anybody? One second. Let's take a look. Yes. Oh, Jeff has um, an, a Teens EDU account and doesn't see the, um, org wide. Is that something? Yeah. That may be a restriction in an EDU tenant. That's exactly right. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Not, not available yet, per my understanding, for Teams for Education. Okay, and then uh, more of a point of confusion in adoption, if private means something different in two, in two different places. Private means something different in two different places. Oh, so like a private team and then a private channel. Right. I think, I think that's where you're going. Okay. Yeah. okay, on my thinking cap. So a private team means that people have to be specifically added to it from the organization. And a private channel means people have to be added specifically to it from the team. So it's almost like, oh, I can't believe I'm going here. A parent site and a subsite, right? By default, if you're if you're going to get to that subsite, you typically had to be in the site. So what it's saying is in the private team, you have to be a member of the organization or invited in and specifically put there. And when you're in that team, unless you're specifically added to other teams, you don't know about them. You can't get to them. You can't move about freely. You are where you're put. Same thing for private channels. You're where you're put. Um, other people can't just browse around and get into it because those people have been specifically and as we would say in SharePoint, 
explicitly added to that private channel and there's a fence around it so other people can't get in. I hope that helps. For now. Yeah, good questions. You guys are keeping me on my toes. Goodness. Love it. Right. And I'm going to put our contact information up. We're taking a break next week. Um, it is Microsoft Inspire, so we've got some work and some prep going on. Uh, Inspire is the right one, right? Yes. <laughs> So Richard and I are going to take that week off from the webinar, but uh, that doesn't mean we're taking the week off. If you guys are out there on social media, Twitter, um, LinkedIn, these QR codes will actually take you to our LinkedIn profiles. Feel free to hit us up. Let us know what you think. Uh, are you enjoying the webinar series? Do you have any suggestions of topics you'd like to see, places you'd like us to dig in? Um, do we need more animated GIFs in our presentations? Yay. Let me know. So we can make that happen. I always, always want to hear from you all. But we thank you so much for being part of the fun today. Um, I can't see chat because I'm a slacker and I didn't boot up my other machine. Um, were we able to locate that PowerShell script? I didn't find it specifically, okay. so it's probably just eluding my search skill at the moment. <laughs> um, but yeah, as Joy mentioned, once we find it, we will certainly make it available. We'll put it out. Um, probably just tweet it out. I imagine that probably the easiest thing to do. Yep, yep, yep. And I'm gonna I'm gonna give my Twitter plug. If you're not on Twitter and you're like, well, I won't see it because I don't have a Twitter account, just go do it. Just go do it. You will get the latest and greatest updates, blogs, webinar information, all that jazz on Twitter faster than just about anywhere else on all of the interwebs. Yes, there's a lot of depressing and annoying crap out there on social media. Just don't follow it. Just don't follow. I don't follow it because I don't need depressing stuff. We're just here for the Microsoft 365 goodness. Exactly. There's my, there's my spiel. But again, thank you. Thank you. I'm going to do last call on questions. Otherwise, y'all are going to get about six minutes back to your day. Woo! Yay! Awesome. Free time. That's, That's right. Time. Yes. Can we get a nap in? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, everyone. We appreciate you so much. Thanks, Have everybody. a good one. Bye. Bye.